Now, if you can transfer that same feeling and image to the full shot, just watch how crisply you strike your iron shots. Well, there you have it. The secret for good iron play, make sure you get your left hand ahead of the club head at impact. Unfortunately, golf doesn't always go according to plan. Some bad shots tend to sneak in here and there. For instance, your slice, how to get rid of it, and some other speciality shots, which if you learn to play, will really help your scoring. The slice. It's a curse which afflicts millions of golfers all around the world. And I'm going to show you how you can get rid of that slice with a very simple cure. Right, now what happens when you slice the golf ball? The fact is the club is coming down on too steep an angle, on too much of an out-to-end path with an open club face. So the club is sliding across the ball and putting this type of spin on it, this clockwise spin, which sends the ball starts the ball to the left and then spins it off to the right. It's a very weak shot, there's not much power attached to it, and all in all, it's a shot that you want to try to eliminate and try to create more of a draw shot. That gives you more distance. Good players fight draws, they don't fight slices. Right, now, let me just hit this slice and you'll see exactly what happens. Now there's a slight exaggeration, but... Uh, Certainly I see some swings like that when people come to see me. And what happens, we can see the divot is across. In other words, the divot looks left of the target. So that's a telltale sign. Now, to get rid of this problem, all it requires you to do is find a slope. A slope where you can put the ball above your feet. So let me show you. Now the reason you need to find a slope like this is because it promotes the exact opposite of a slicing swing. Basically what it does, it allows you to have a shallower angle into the ball as opposed to a steep angle. It gets the club approaching the ball more from the inside on an into-out type path as opposed to out to in. And as long as your forearms rotate over one another as you swing through, that allows the club face to be square or slightly closing as opposed to open. So you can see it's the exact opposite. So making a few swings with the ball above your feet and hitting a few shots will help to promote the right sensations. And that's what you want to feel when you're out on the golf course. So let's hit a shot here. You'll see how the club swings around and around, very much like a door opening and closing. That's the image you want to have. It opens and closes on a much shallower angle than you would if you were slicing the ball and had the divot going to the left. In this case, the divot should actually, if anything, probably look slightly to the right. But let's see, we should hit the ball fairly cleanly from this lie and produce a draw. And there we go, a big draw. Now, if you practice making swings off this type of slope and even hitting shots, if you do this on a regular basis, when you go out on the golf course, you have that same sensation and you can wave goodbye to that slice. Let's look at uphill and downhill lie situations, Bill. Why don't you set up to the ball? No, it's always been uncomfortable for me to set up to a shot like this. Well, naturally, the tendency is when one wants to lean into the slope to secure one's balance. So what you have to try to do is set yourself parallel to the slope. So take your dress position, put the ball about the middle of your stance, and set yourself up in such a way that you feel that your right side is quite a bit lower than your left. See, now you've got this tilted down, and in actual fact, now you're parallel to the slope. What this will allow you to do is to actually swing up the slope and allow the club to get through. The tendency is if you lean left, you swing into the slope and you really don't get any speed. Remember, from this lie here, it's very difficult to get your weight through. So you must keep the club swinging up the slope. Okay. One further point to remember, Bill, you must take a little bit more club because when you're on an elevated lie like this, the ball goes up in the air. So if you're going to hit a five iron, you need to hit a four iron. So just take that into account as well. All right. Go ahead and hit a shot. Good, that was solid. You really got through that one nicely. Now let's look at the downhill line, shall we? Okay. This shot, Bill, is the same but different. The tendency is to lean back into the slope to maintain your balance. All right, so what I want you to do is set up to it now and try to get yourself as parallel as possible to the slope and put the ball back in your stance this time just to make sure you make contact with the ball first. Okay. Now you can see now you're getting your body 
in a situation where it's now parallel, your right side feels higher than the left, and uh, you're in good shape here now to swing down the slope and to make good contact. Finally, Bill, don't forget to take a more lofted club. From this lie, the ball tends to fly lower and a little further. Okay. okay? So if you're going to hit a five iron, now you hit a six iron. Okay. Excellent. You see, balance is so crucial from these lies. So you set yourself upright, and then no problem. Here's a nasty one. The ball sitting way below your feet. You know, the key really for any shot like this, Bill, or any slope for that matter, is balance. Okay, so now let's look at this one. The tendency is with a slope like this for the ball to follow the shape of the slope. In other words, the ball should move left to right. So we, first of all, we have to allow for that and aim a little left of our intended target. Okay, so the important thing is we're going to try to get good contact here. So we don't want to try to get too ambitious, so I'm using a four iron here. Wouldn't want to use a wood or a two iron or anything. But now, to get down to it, what I need to do is widen my stance. Okay, get my stance a little bit wider, especially with my long legs, so I can actually get down to the ball. I'm also going to try to hold the club up right at the end as far as I can. Gives me a little bit more length to the club there. Okay? Now, naturally, with the ball below my feet, the tendency is to swing the club off on a very, on a very upright plane. So I've got to accommodate that by actually having the ball fairly far forward in my stance. Okay? And finally, the last thing you want to do is to really address the ball more off the toe because the tendency is when you swing for the club to work outward. So we've got to ensure that we don't get the weight going towards our toes and keep the weight back here and say addressing it off the toe, even if we move out a little bit, we'll sort of still strike the ball out of the middle of the club face. Okay, so let's see how we go doing this. Right, so maintaining balance is very important. I feel my hands and arms working a little bit more. Obviously, my body's in a very restricted position. Well, that's great. Is the opposite true for the ball above your feet? Well, let's go ahead and have a look. Okay. Okay. Well, there we are. All right, we'd be probably upset if it finished there because we'd expect to roll back down the hill. But anyhow, so what we're going to do now, obviously, we've got a slope in this way here, so the ball in actual fact is now going to follow the slope, so it's going to move right to left in the air. We have to allow for it, aim a little to the right. And what I'm going to do, it's going to certainly flat my swing plane, so I'm going to choke down on the club now to help to facilitate a flatter swing plane. I'm also going to put the ball back in my stance slightly, because obviously a flatter swing plane means I'm going to strike the ball a little bit earlier in the arc, so a little further back in the stance there, Bill. And then finally, what I want to do is to address the ball this time a little bit more out of the neck or the heel of the club because the tendency is as you swing to sort of move back down the hill. So the other important thing is just to feel that your weight stays forward on your toes so you don't fall away from it too much. Okay. Okay, and then once again, try to swing smoothly. There won't be too much body action, more hand and arm type of motion and uh, make a nice smooth swing. Well, it's a good shot there. Well, we don't always get these type of lies, Bill, but when we do, we have to know how to handle them. Well, bad luck, Bill. Here we are on a par four, and you've hit it in the rough off the tee. So uh, we've got three different types of lies to contend with. One where the ball is sitting down a little bit, not too bad. This one's not that good at sitting down somewhat more, and that one's terrible, it's buried. <laughs> All right, so we've got 180 yards to the green, and uh, here what I'd like you to do is think about taking a five wood. You know, most modern five woods, they have these little rails at the bottom. In actual fact, a fairway wood will actually slide through the grass fairly easily, a lot easier than it will a long iron. So take the five wood out, and let's see what you can do with it. Okay. Now remember, you're trying to sweep the ball away, so just make sure as you swing back that you really brush the grass. Hold the club slightly off the ground. I always advise you to do that if the ball's sitting up a little bit because if you hold it down, the ball can actually sink down further into the rough. All right. Okay, so. Do I play it just normal? Normal position there, yeah. Right. Maybe choke down just a little bit on the club. Okay, off we go. 
Good. Now that came out really well. You see how the club actually slid through the rough? That was amazing. Okay, you wouldn't have thought of that, would you? No, never would have. All right, now let's look at this lie here. Now what I'd suggest you do, obviously you're not going to get to the green, so you've got to certainly, you can get over these first bunkers here, so probably something about a seven iron, six or seven iron, maybe a seven iron for safety. Okay. Make sure you can get down and through it. Remember, from this type of lie too, when the ball hits the ground, it tends to run quite a bit. We get what we call a flyer, okay? And it'll also tend to shoot out just a little bit more. So you'll probably get a fair amount of distance anyway. Okay. Okay, so for this particular shot, I want, to, I want you to open the face slightly, okay? And I want you to pick the club up pretty quickly and make sure that you really feel that your left hand is leading the club head, okay? Make sure the club head does not pass the hands. So it won't be a very long follow-through either. It'll be a fairly punchy, choppy type of swing. Okay. All right, so put a fraction more weight on your left side as well. Good. Now you advance that ball nicely down the fairway, and that's about all you can hope for. Hopefully you can have a chip and a putt. All right. Or a pitch and a putt. <laughs> okay, now here's our desperate lie here. You can hardly see the ball. Lucky to find this one. Now this one, you're just going to have to take your medicine and take the heaviest club that you've got, in other words, with the, the greatest amount of loft, a sand wedge, and really just pitch it back out onto the fairway. Okay. You don't want to get too brave here. All right. Yeah, you can see it. Make sure it's your ball. That's a good tip, too. I think it's mine. All right. Need binoculars to tell. <laughs> All right. Now, make sure you lean left once again, pick the club up very sharply, and then hit down on it. Blade open or blade? Blade a little open, yes. Okay. You want to feel like you're cutting it very slightly, cutting across it. Good. Good. So, in this case, you're really trying to take the shortest route to the fairway. All right, so there you have three rough lies. Hopefully you'll keep them on the fairway, but sometimes you land up here. Do you want to learn to score well? Well, when you get those pitching clubs, like a pitching wedge or a sand wedge in your hand, you've got to learn to get the ball close to the hole. That'll really save you a number of shots. So I've got three great tips to show you how to do that. Okay. Yeah, not too bad. I worked hard at that as a kid and I think I developed a pretty good short game. And obviously pitching, that's a big part of the game and you guys on the tour are really great at this. And the big key obviously is distance control and that's the big fault that I see with many amateurs or even good amateurs or even some of the tour players that really don't have the distance control necessary to get the ball close and up and down it from say 60 yards and in. Not only do you have to have a good method but you really have to practice this a lot. That's right and I don't see people practicing this shot nearly enough and uh, the technique is not so difficult I mean it's pretty similar to the big swing there's some subtle adjustments which we'll go into but uh, the major feature is learning to control your distance right, and a couple of things that I do which might help uh, the viewers is that uh, in there as you say there are some minor minor changes but really uh, a few things that I do is I normally just choke down on the club a little bit a bit more control. Right. Give me a little. I'm not looking for distance here, as you say. I'm looking to control the distance. I'm not trying to hit the ball a long way. You know, choke down a little bit on it. I'm going to stand a little narrower and a little, a little more open than I would normally on a on a on a, a wedge shot, say a full wedge shot. Yeah. And then one of the things I'm going to do is I'm trying to control the speed of the club head with my upper body. I don't have to hit it too far, and I don't want to use my lower body, my legs, and my hips too much. It's just there for support. That's why I'm standing as narrow as I am. Just going to use the shoulders and the arms and let the club head swing nice and freely. How about your grip pressure and weight distribution? Well, on this shot, David, I'll probably just hold the club a little lighter than I normally would, just to keep it nice and smooth and so I don't get too jerky on it. And with my weight distribution, I'll probably have a little more weight on the left side, probably about 60-40. Again, I'm not trying to get a big turn or anything. I'm just trying to control the distance that I'm going to hit it. Okay. Right, so we've got a 60-yarder here. Go ahead and hit a shot. Oh, you just got inside me there. <laughs> that's so, a dollar to me, huh? That's it. So, listen, just make a swing, say, for a 45-yarder. Okay, so on my 60, I'd be back in here. On my 40-yarder, I'm just going to be a little shorter, but much the same kind of swing, a little softer. A little softer motion with your body. Right. Well, let's go up and hit a couple of those shorter shots. Okay. 